I think Queen Elizabeth represents continuity between Britain's great past and its more middling presence and future. Queen Elizabeth II was born Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Mary on April 21, 1926, in London. Few expected her to assume the throne, as her father, Prince Albert, was the second son of King George V and considered a long shot for the crown himself. When she was just nine years old, her grandfather passed away and her uncle Edward became King Edward VIII. He was forced to make a decision between the love of his life, an American woman who was twice divorced, or the throne. The earthquake that was the abdication of the Queen's uncle Edward VIII in December of 1936 changed her life, changed her family's lives radically. Her father became the king. She would become the queen. During World War II, Elizabeth was just 14 years old, but she was already making a public appearance to make a live radio broadcast to basically reassure the children and adults that everything was gonna be okay. Queen Elizabeth and her mother and father became an enormously important uh, symbol for the British people. They were out after the bombings every day, touring, making sure everyone was all right. Queen Elizabeth and her sister, Margaret Rose, put on uniforms and worked in hospitals and other places. They rose to the occasion. In 1947, Elizabeth married her distant cousin, Philip Mountbatten, and began a family with the birth of Prince Charles in 1948, and then Princess Anne in 1950. On February 6, 1952, the Queen's father died, and she automatically became Queen. One of the very first things that Queen Elizabeth did differently was to televise her coronation in 1953. It was the first time that had ever been done. And she actually began having weekly meetings with the Prime Minister, and that actually continues to this day. In all, Queen Elizabeth II had four children, Prince Charles, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. It wasn't all red carpets and roses for the Queen. Her security was very much uppermost in people's mind. In 1979, Lord Mountbatten, a relative, was murdered by an IRA bomb. In 1982, shots were fired at the Queen as she rode on horseback at the Trooping the Color. They were blanks, but nobody knew it at the time. A man broke into her bedroom and sat on her bed, smoking with his hand bleeding. The early 1980s also brought the marriage of her son, Prince Charles, to Lady Diana Spencer, who soon gave the Queen additional heirs to the throne, with Prince William's birth in 1982 and Prince Harry's in 1984. 1992 was a rather scandalous year, and Queen Elizabeth referred to it often as Anna's Horribilis. It was the year that Charles and Andrew separated from their wives, and Anne had actually divorced. When Diana died in 1997, the Queen's image took a hit because she didn't say anything for what seemed like an unconscionably long time to the British public. In 2012, Queen Elizabeth II celebrates her Diamond Jubilee, marking 60 years of rule as Queen. Only Queen Victoria ruled for a longer period. I think the Queen will be regarded by history as a steady hand on an unsteady tiller. During her reign, the Commonwealth changed substantially, people's attitude toward the royals changed substantially, and she kept faith and kept it on a steady footing.